Good morning and welcome to this week's Your Soul Matters broadcast. The Your Soul Matters broadcast is a ministry of the House of Deliverance Church. I'm your host, Tatiana Cody. It is my hope that this broadcast and the message you're about to receive will inspire you, encourage you, and convince you that your soul truly does matter. It matters to God. It matters to us here at the House of Deliverance Church, and we hope that it matters to you. Let's welcome our speaker this morning, Elder Sterling Jones. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. To my viewers, I say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, we are going to talk about being spiritually alert today. Uh, and our scripture comes from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. And it says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lust thereof. Wake up and make sure you have on the right clothes. You know, when I was in junior high school, I had to catch a school bus. And I hated catching school bus because I had to get up very early. That school bus came at 6, 10 a.m., which meant I had to get up before then, way before then. I had to get up around five o'clock in the morning and I am not to this day, a morning person. My wife will surely attest to that. <laughs> um, so I had to get up around five o'clock in the morning and it was about a 15 minute walk to the bus stop. It was brutal. I had to walk, you know, uh, whether it was raining, whether it was snowing, whatever the case may be, you had to get there. It was a struggle. And each and every morning uh, that I had to struggle to get up, my mother was my personal alarm clock. And she would come into that room, because I didn't get up every morning. <laughs> and she would shake me uh, and tell me to get up. I would beg for a few more minutes, but she would never relent, knowing I had a bus to catch. But you know, I needed that help. I needed to be shaken out of my sleep. I needed to be told to wake up. And that is exactly where Paul comes in in this scripture. What he's telling the people of that today, of that day, that church at Rome, and what he's telling us now is that we need to wake up. You know, going back to my story about the school, you know, it was it was situations where you know I had to do this every day, and sometimes, in one particular time, I'll say I did not have on the right clothes because it was field day. And I always wanted to participate in field day. What kid doesn't want to run, jump, have fun, and show off a little bit, right? But this day um, was the day that I got to wear my dress clothes and my dress shoes. And field day was on that day. So I did what my routine was to wear those clothes. But because um, it was the field day this particular day was in the gym, and the coach would not let you wear dress shoes on the wood floor. So I didn't get to participate. I didn't have the right clothes on. I know there are some believers that need the same encouragement spiritually when it comes to being woke up. They have been going to church for years, but they become spiritually indifferent. They become spiritually asleep. They go through the routine, right, of coming to church. They are like spiritual zombies sitting there on the pew, you know, on cue clapping, on Q9 they hear, but you don't really see any change in them. This is a, da a dangerous state to be fall into. The problem with being in this state is that you could easily be influenced because you're not really standing for anything. You're not convicted in your walk with God. This is not, as I said, not a new problem. This is a problem that Paul addressed in this scripture. Paul said, it's time to wake up. 
our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. In other words, each day that passes brings us closer to Christ's imminent return. It's not something that's preached or talked about as much as it used to be. I remember growing up, there was a song that they used to sing on the broadcast. Time, 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 time is winding up. Time, 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 time is winding up. Destruction is in the land. God's going to move his hand. Time is winding up. It's true today. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? God is coming back, and he's coming back for a church without a spot or a blemish. So you make sure you got on the right clothes. Right. In Romans 13, 11, as I said, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of your sleep, for now is the salvation nearer than we first believed. Paul uses this fact as incentive for us to wake up and get moving spiritually. Jesus Christ could return at any moment, as I've already said. We could be required to stand before and give account for our lives. Yeah. Are you satisfied with where you are spiritually? Oh my gosh. Are you ready to face God's final judgment to determine your final destination? We may not have much time to get ready, y'all. Wake up and put on the right clothes. Verse 12 talks about letting us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the arm of light. So the Bible uh, does over 70 examples or references, if you will, about clothing, about garments, about armor. In other words, the things that we wear. The Bible shows us that God is concerned by this repetition about the kind of clothes that we are wearing because it represents the status of our relationship with God. So going back to verse 12, it says, let us cast off the works of darkness. In other words, God wants you to get this stuff off, yeah, right? right? The, yeah. the works of darkness are what? Those things that are evil, those things that are not good. He actually gives us further description as we read into, the, into our lesson text. It says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. So these are things that are the works of darkness. It lets us, it, does, it makes it plain for us. So, and they actually are in pairs. They're in groupings, categories. So God doesn't want you to pat those things on if you are a Christian. He wants you to be well-dressed. Well and he tells us also what he wants us to be wearing. But let's look back at those things that we shouldn't wear, those works of darkness. One of the other things that we, I want to say is that when we look at how he describes what we should do with those works or with, those, with that clothing, the first thing he tells us is with the works of darkness to cast them off, mm. cast off. He doesn't say take them off. He says cast them off. And if you know anything, I'm also a fisherman on opportunities and times when I have the opportunity. So when you cast, you take a rod and reel and you cast it and you cast it far. You don't drop it. You cast it far away to get to the spot where you think the fish may be. So when the Lord is talking about here in the word about casting, he wants you to throw that stuff away so that you can't get it. He wants you to get it as far away from you as you possibly can. He wants you to get away lying. He wants you to get away stealing. He wants you to get away from murdering and backbiting and gossiping and all those things that tear down and don't lift up. So the works of darkness are sinful works, things that are not of God, the things I just spoke about. The world is, a, is in spiritual darkness. And sometimes we as Christians, we have a tendency to walk as the world walks. Mm -hmm. Walking in darkness, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Cast it off. Reject it. Sometimes, especially, we become spiritual zombies, as I was saying. So it's easy to fall into the philosophy of the world, to let it creep into our minds, to allow it to affect how we live and how we think. We must guard our eyes by being careful of what we watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. elementary, but you need to pay attention to what you are allowing to come in you. Yeah. Because just like what you eat, you are what you eat, mm -hmm. 
You are what you think. You are what you see. Because those things imprint on your brain and imprint on your heart. So be careful. You know, that's not a common thing, but you should filter what you're looking at. If the, if, the, if you feel led and moved that things are not right what you're looking at, that is deplorable, turn it off. You don't need right. it. You don't have to have it. There's plenty of other ways to entertain yourself. Mm -hmm. How about picking up the word of God, right. learning who God is? Just a thought. In verse 13, Paul describes some of the other works of darkness. As I said, he shows three, three categories, rioting and drunkenness, chambering and wantonness. Rioting and drunkenness are basically talking about uh, riotous living or, or the endless search for fun and pleasure, mm -hmm. carousing, partying, even some things that you may feel innocent. But the problem with those things are is when you overindulge, yeah. when they begin to direct your life, when, they, when you make them things so important and you overdo it. The chambering and wantonness really has to do, the chambering is an old word that's not used very much. It simply reflects and talks and, and is related to illicit sexual relationships of any kind. Lewdness means shamelessness. In other words, it describes a person who on, that not only engages in illicit sexual acts, but flaunts his lustful attitude and actions without shame. He has no regard for his fellow uh, neighbors, seeing what he does, and most important, importantly, he doesn't care how God sees him. Strife and envy in this is actually another category that I found interesting to be in the in these uh, categorized with these other things, because it says that God looks and makes it just as important to throw away and to get away from envy and strife. These things have to do with jealousy and how we uh, don't want nobody else to do better than us. If you're doing better than us, we want to tear tear us down. So there is no place in our lives, of the, in the life of a, of a believer for such things, so we should cast them away. The right clothes to put on. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the arm of light. What Paul does in this scripture is he substitutes uh, armor for works. In other words, we're putting on something that's going to protect us. Armor, that's what it's designed to do. It's, it's a military term. It's something that you put on. And if you're not familiar with it, the armor of God or the armor of light is the, breast, the breastplate of righteousness. He wants us to put on righteousness. The belt or waistband of truth. He wants us to walk in truth. You know, he wants us to have peace. He puts, puts shoes on the feet. They call the shoes of peace. And he gives us the helmet of salvation to protect our mind. The sword of the spirit is the only offensive weapon, and it is the word of God. So, and all these things are empowered through prayer. So we have to wake up and make sure we have on the right clothes. Finally, as we do these things, we also have an ultimate weapon, which is putting on Jesus Christ. If we do this, if we take Jesus every, everywhere we go, by putting him on, you know, having his character in our hearts, letting him uh, have full access to our lives, then he will protect us, and he will keep us, and we will be ready for that day that is at hand, that day when Christ returns. Yes. We will be ready to answer that question I asked you earlier. Are you ready for when he comes? Amen. 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 Amen, amen. I truly hope the words you just heard was a blessing to your soul. As the elder said, wake up, put on the right clothes. What choice would you make to put on the right clothes? Would you walk in light or would you walk in darkness? If you're looking to learn more about God, come visit us. Information can be found at our website, hodchurch.com. If you're looking to talk to someone or would like to receive prayer, please call 1-800-741-SOUL or 1-800-741-7685. We look forward to seeing you next week for another inspiring message and messenger. Until then, don't forget, your soul matters.